This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at deviation from ideal gas behavior. An ideal gas is a hypothetical gas that obeys the gas laws and the kinetic molecular theory. The kinetic molecular theory states the following. Particles of an ideal gas are in constant, random, straight line motion. Collisions between particles of an ideal gas are elastic, which means that total kinetic energy is conserved. The volume occupied by the particles of an ideal gas is negligible relative to the volume of the container. There are no intermolecular forces acting between particles of an ideal gas. And finally, the average kinetic energy of the particles of an ideal gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature in Kelvin. A real gas is a gas that deviates from ideal gas behavior. For example, real gases have a finite measurable volume. They also have intermolecular forces that act between the particles. Real gases exhibit nearly ideal behavior at relatively high temperatures and low pressures. They deviate the most from ideal behavior at low temperatures and high pressures. In this table, we have the molar volumes for a range of real gases as well as an ideal gas. For an ideal gas, we have a value of 22.414 cubic decimeters per mole. If we look at the molar volumes for the real gases under these conditions, we can see that they are similar. This tells us that real gases behave almost ideally under these conditions. However, as mentioned in the previous slide, real gases deviate from ideal behavior at low temperatures and high pressures, which we'll look at next. For one mole of an ideal gas, the product of PV over RT is always equal to 1. Here we have the ideal gas equation that's been rearranged to solve for N, which is amount in moles. If we substitute in the values for the pressure and temperature at STP, we get a value of one mole. As we'll see in the next slide, for real gases, the product of PV over RT is not equal to one. In this graph on the y-axis, we have the product of PV over RT. On the x-axis, we have pressure. From the graph, we can see that for an ideal gas, the product of PV over RT is equal to one at all pressures. The three curves on the graph show the deviation of nitrogen from ideal behavior at three different temperatures. The greatest deviation from ideal behavior occurs at 200 Kelvin. This tells us that real gases deviate the most from ideal gas behavior under two conditions, high pressures and low temperatures. On the graph, we can see that at moderately high pressures, the product of PV over RT is less than one. And at very high pressures, the product of PV over RT is greater than one. So as we saw in the previous slide, at moderately high pressures, the values of PV over RT are less than one, which is mainly because of the effects of intermolecular forces. In this diagram, we can see that at lower external pressures, the particles are too far apart for intermolecular forces to act. As the external pressure increases, the particles are forced closer together. On the right, we can see the effect of this increased pressure on the intermolecular forces of a gas. Intermolecular attractions between the gas particles reduce the force of the collisions with the container wall, which results in a lower pressure. Because the pressure of the gas becomes less than expected, the product of PV over RT is less than one. So to summarize, at moderately high pressures, the deviation from ideal gas behavior is mainly because of the effects of intermolecular forces. Next, we'll look at the cause of the deviation from ideal behavior at very high pressures. As we saw previously, at very high pressures, the values of PV over RT are greater than one. This is mainly because of the effects of molecular volume. From the diagram, we can see that at lower external pressures, the volume occupied by the gas particles is negligible compared to the volume of the container. At very high external pressures, the volume occupied by the gas particles becomes significant. The V in PV over RT is the volume of the container. However, the volume available for the gas particles is less than the container volume. Therefore, the product of PV over RT is greater than one. So to summarize, at very high pressures, the deviation from ideal behavior, 
is mainly because of the effects of molecular volume. So far in this video we've considered the effects of intermolecular forces and pressure on the deviation of a real gas from ideal gas behaviour. Next we'll consider the temperature. At lower temperatures the particles in a real gas have lower average kinetic energy and the particles of a real gas at higher temperatures have higher average kinetic energy. Because the particles of a gas at lower temperatures are moving more slowly, they are less able to overcome the effects of the intermolecular forces. At higher temperatures, for example 1000 Kelvin, the particles of the gas have sufficient kinetic energy to overcome the effects of the intermolecular forces. So as we can see, as temperature increases, real gases behave more ideally and at lower temperatures they show the greatest deviation from ideal gas behaviour. On this graph we can see the deviation from ideal behaviour for four different gases. They are hydrogen, nitrogen, methane and carbon dioxide. From the graph we can see that each gas differs in its deviation from ideal behaviour. At moderately high pressures we can see that carbon dioxide and methane show significant deviation from ideal behaviour whereas hydrogen and nitrogen show less deviation. Previously we saw that the deviation at moderately high pressures was because of the effect of intermolecular forces. Both carbon dioxide and methane have stronger intermolecular forces between their molecules than nitrogen and hydrogen. Therefore they show the greatest deviation at moderately high pressures. The gas that shows the least deviation from ideal behaviour is hydrogen. This is because of its low molar mass which results in weak London dispersion forces between its molecules. So to summarise, gases with weak intermolecular forces will show less deviation from ideal gas behaviour and gases with stronger intermolecular forces will show more deviation from ideal gas behaviour. We'll end the video with a comparison of ideal gases and real gases. As we've seen, ideal gases behave ideally at all temperatures and pressures. Real gases on the other hand deviate the most from ideal behaviour at low temperatures and high pressures. The volume occupied by an ideal gas is assumed to be negligible. However, real gases have a finite measurable volume. Ideal gases have no intermolecular forces acting between the particles. Real gases do have intermolecular forces acting between their particles. And finally, ideal gases obey the ideal gas law which is PV equals nRT. Real gases obey the van der Waals equation, which we'll look at in more detail in the next video.